So what is going on with Harley Davidson as we move toward 2023? Oh my God, do we have a lot to talk about. Is Harley permanently closing its headquarters building in Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Why are so many independently owned dealerships closing their doors and selling? Oh, and what's up with the possibility of a 975 version of the very popular Pan American Adventure bike? Is the long talked about Harley Bronx Street Fighter actually going to become a reality? And what's all this mean for the future of the motor company? Well, these are all loaded questions and I have a metric tend to throw at you. So let's dive in and see if we can make sense of it all. 2023 could prove to be a very exciting year for Harley Davidson. So let's start with the question of whether Harley Davidson is permanently closing the doors to the Milwaukee, Wisconsin headquarters building, which has served as such since 1973. The answer is yes. Well, kind of. You see, Harley Davidson is letting employees work from home on what may become a permanent basis. Hardy's Milwaukee headquarters closed in 2020 due to the global pandemic, but Hardy CEO Jochen Zeit says the complex is going to be repurposed rather than reopened for workers. Now, neither Harley Davidson nor the CEO has specified exactly what its 500,000 square foot complex in Milwaukee will become. Still, the company insists the location will remain an important location for Harley Davidson's presence in the United States. Further, it seems Harley is fully embracing remote work and the flexibility and openness it brings. Having the ability to just push a button wherever that person sits, get that person online or create a meeting, that's not defined by which floor you sit on or who's in the corner office, Zeit said in a recent interview. And it democratizes the way we work together and allows you to bring the best talent into the company no matter where they sit. Interestingly is that Zeitz's philosophy is in stark contrast to that of Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who told employees recently they had to spend 40 hours a week in the office and failure to show up would be considered a resignation. Now, other companies such as GM have tried to take this approach or even a hybrid option, but have faced blowback. And even though Zeitz is embracing remote work, he still thinks face-to-face -face meetings are valuable as long as there's a clear purpose. I don't wanna see the exact same agenda we would have if we were on a screen, he said. So what's my opinion of all this? Well, I personally think that varies greatly from industry to industry. I do recognize that there are some benefits to remote work, such as fewer distractions, workers may feel less stressed and stay more focused. And of course, remote workers love having flexibility in their schedules if it's feasible. With that said, I think Hardy needs to tread lightly here because a huge part of the motorcycle lifestyle is riding and hanging out with other like-minded bikers. You certainly want your employees to embrace, live, and understand the motorcycle culture. Uh, that's hard to do remotely. A ton of bonding, discussion, ideas, and a sense of belonging can occur during those in-office, in-person hours, and certainly those motorcycle rides to lunch and back. That just simply can't be replicated via a video conference or virtual check-ins, in my opinion. And also keep in mind this building housed the headquarters people at Harley, you know, the ones that steer the ship. Pick up, you bastards! Iceberg, right ahead! And let's not forget the fact that being secluded and alone every day is clearly not healthy. Here at Law Abiding Biker Media, employees do work remotely part of the time, but that simply won't ever replace the times when we hang out, laugh, bullshit, and just ride motorcycles together. That's when the real magic ideas and bonding happen. So that's my opinion. Now I want to know yours. So leave a comment below. Do you think this remote work environment Harley is adopting is good for the company and the customer? I look forward to reading your thoughts. Okay, next, let's talk about independently owned dealerships. It's true that some smaller independently owned Harley dealerships are closing their doors. In fact, the Denver Post reported this month that Rocky Mountain Harley Davidson, the oldest family owned Harley motorcycle dealership in Colorado, is shutting down at the end of the month. The longtime business founded in 1979 by owner Kathy Yavoli, who still serves as Rocky Mountain Hardy Davidson president, has fallen victim to a corporate downsizing strategy, said Marina Yavoli, Kathy's daughter and director of marketing at the Littleton Motorcycle Dealership. We are closing not by our choice, Marina Yavoli said, to be politically correct, they, Hardy Davidson, are condensing the market and independent dealers do not fit in that mold. They are doing away with the family-owned businesses. The dealership's Facebook announcement goes on and in part said, based on changes in this overall market and in accordance with Harley-Davidson Motor Company's network strategy, we will be retiring as an authorized Harley-Davidson dealership. In response to this information, members of our law-abiding biker patron-only member Facebook group started a group discussion and there are confirmations of dealerships closing and being bought up. The trend seems to be that instead of one owner, one dealership, 
Larger entities and corporations are buying up multiple dealerships. This seems to confirm the Denver Post article about independent dealerships being forced out for bigger entities or corporations to come in. So it seems Hardy is restructuring the dealership network and maybe from their interests, it is easier to deal with fewer owners because each owner or corporation owns many dealerships. The real question is, what does this mean for the average Hardy Davidson customer like us? Here are some great comments and insights from the awesome members of our private Facebook group. So patron member Don Reimer started the discussion in the private Facebook group and goes on to say, it appears Ross Meyer's destination Daytona is being sold, but the main players stay in place. Black Hills Hardy Davidson is apparently being sold as well. Again, the main players stay in place supposedly. There is also a rumor Mirror Beach Hardy Davidson is on the block as well. Who's buying up these places and what are their plans? Does corporate think that is a good idea and or are they promoting the idea? I don't like it much, but maybe it's good for the industry. I don't know. In response, patron member Rick Kemner wrote, I don't think it's Harley's intention to force independent dealerships out. It's simply what we're seeing in many businesses and industries. Small businesses are being gobbled up by bigger corporations, often multifaceted. For us end users, it's usually not advantageous. Experienced staff are replaced with inexperienced staff as they are cheaper. Service also suffers and customer relationships suffer. The only advantage is access to larger inventory of bikes and parts, drawing from multiple locations. Though it's not always advantageous to customers as they are less willing to consider better pricing and fail to take those extra steps to serve the customer. And in response to that, patron member Mark Arnold from Canada, shout out to all our Canadian members, says, my dealership was bought up by a group that owns four others. Since then, most things have deteriorated. They got rid of many of the longtime experienced staff and replaced them with kids who have no experience or customer service skills. They refuse to do anything more than the absolute bare minimum to support our hog chapter. Membership has dropped in half since they took over. The only positive I've seen is that sometimes they can get parts shipped from other stores when things are on back order from HD. My thoughts are that Hardy should be very careful if they are in fact snuffing out independent dealerships and going more corporate. I think that move could potentially hurt them in the long run. You see, many longtime Hardy customers and newer customers for that matter have built personal relationships with their independent dealerships and personnel and get treated in a personal way. An independent owner takes great pride in their dealership for the most part. You see, it's more of a family friendly one-on-one -on -one experience that many Hardy owners are accustomed to, and it very well may be one of the reasons they stick with Hardy Davidson. And don't forget that many of these independent dealerships have become staples of their communities. I don't think many customers will take kindly to large, ambiguous corporations buying up dealerships and crushing the mom and pop outfits, so to speak, that have worked hard over many years serving Harley, their customers, and their communities. I just can't believe that a corporation owning a bunch of dealerships can provide the same down-to-earth customer experience. But this seems to be the way many industries are going these days, like Komodo Holdings Incorporated, which owns Revzilla, JMP Cycle, Cycle Gear, and Rever. I guess only time will tell. And we want to hear your thoughts. Do you think this is a good move for Hardy or not? So drop us a comment below. And if you want access to our troll-free private patron member-only Facebook group of nothing but bikers helping and connecting with other bikers, I'll link to it in the description below. And by becoming a patron member, you are supporting our mission to help educate, entertain, and connect bikers worldwide. Oh, and aside from the private Facebook group, there are a ton of other benefits you'll get when signing up as a patron member. Okay, let's talk about the potential release of the new Pan America 975. This is not surprising to me since Harley's first stab at the adventure motorcycle market was the Pan America 1250, which quickly claimed the title of the number one selling adventure motorcycle in North America, beating out other long standing adventure motorcycles like the BMW 1250 GS Adventure. Oh, and make sure you check out my very popular Sturgis Pan America review link in the description below. So earlier this year, signs of the new Pan America 975 were mistakenly mentioned on the Hardy Davidson website for an accessory locking fuel cap. The fuel cap was listed as being compatible with the current Pan America 1250 models, as well as two unannounced models, the RA 975 and RA 975S, which I assume to be the new Pan America models, which will be powered by the 975cc version of the Revolution Max engine like the one in the new Nightster. Oh, and make sure to check out my very popular Santa Barbara, California, Hardy Nightster review, link in the description. Further proof comes to us from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Safety Issues and Recalls webpage. 
This page lets people look up recalls, safety investigations, consumer complaints, and manufacturer communications in NHTSA's system. As of today, if you click on the vehicle tab and search for RA975 or RA975S, you will find three service bulletins for a 2022 Harley-Davidson 975 Pan America. I'll put a link to that NHTSA page in the description so you can see that for yourself. Now, the fact that the smaller Pan America was mentioned on the Harley website would suggest that they likely plan to include the mid-sized adventure bike this year, but decided against launching them perhaps due to supply chain issues. So my prediction is that the new Pan America 975 will come out at some point in 2023. I'll also note that Harley-Davidson is expected to announce the bulk of the 2023 models in January. I will also say that I'm super stoked to see a hopefully lighter, smaller, less expensive Pan America like the 975 in this case that will compete with the likes of the Yamaha Tenere 700, Honda Africa Twin, the KTM 890 Adventure, and the BMW GSF 850, to name a few. The new Pan America 975 may just beat them out in sales too, as they did with the 1250 version. And I can't wait to test ride and review the new Pan American 975, so stay tuned and subscribe. And if you wanna learn more about this and a whole bunch of other very valuable motorcycle information, make sure you listen and follow the Law Abiding Biker podcast. You can listen on any major podcast platform. Just simply head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash app and decide where you wanna listen. Okay, next let's talk about the infamous Harley Bronx Street Fighter that never came to be. Well, so far. Remember, this bike was supposed to come out in 2021 with the Revolution Max 975T motor, but it never did. Now, Hardy never confirmed they scrapped the Bronx Street Fighter, but they did come out with a Nightster in 2022, which has the Rev Max 975T engine. And many thought that this was a replacement for the Bronx, that it was dead and would never make it past a concept bike. However, new information has leaked that Hardy reapplied for the trademark for the Bronx Street Fighter name. So, that begs the question, how much longer will Harley dangle that carrot in front of us? Will we finally see the Bronx Street Fighter actually release and hit the streets in 2023? All right, your journey's not done on the channel. I'm popping some videos on the screen here for you. Hopefully some useful or entertaining, heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get, bikeaholics. Peace.